In this video, we're going to look at how you can use ChatGPT in your Power App. Now, I don't mean use ChatGPT to build your Power App. I mean actually call ChatGPT from within your Power App using a connector. But first, let me give you a quick understanding of what ChatGPT is. It's AI that can help you build stuff. And you probably have seen a demo by now of doing something like this, where I come in and say, what is Power Apps? And it will come and tell me what Power Apps is. Sometimes it'll be 100% accurate. Sometimes it'll be a little off. Sometimes it'll have a little snark to it. But that's what ChatGPT is. Now, it also understands context. So for example, I can come in and tell it that I want to generate a formula. So I want to create a Power Apps formula with a filter on contacts data source on the first name equal to Dave. And it will spit out a formula that I could use in my application to kind of pull that in. And sometimes it gives you more than you want, as you can see there. Now you can also do things like ask it who it is. And I'll just do this to contrast it when we do it from within the app. And it's ChatGPT, a large model developed by OpenAI. So that is ChatGPT in a nutshell. Now let's look at how we connect that into a Power Apps and use it from our app and can do custom things with ChatGPT using the API. Well, first that starts with the OpenAI connector. It's an independent publisher connector that was published by one of the community. And in fact, just yesterday, OpenAI, the company, released ChatGPT API and this connector is in the process, as I record this, of being updated to support the chat GPT endpoint and have an action on the connector that you can use to call it from Power Apps or Power Automate Flows. Now, as of this recording, I actually had to download this from GitHub and bring it in as a custom connector. But if you wait a couple of weeks, it'll be published as part of the program and you'll be able to do this just by referencing the OpenAI connector. Now, I built a simple Canvas app and in this Canvas app, I have simply a vertical gallery that is going to show the responses. I have a text input box where we can put our questions to ChatGPT, and I can send it. And we'll go through and see how all of this works. But let's start by running the application and trying a couple of similar things. So let's try the same thing. So we'll put in what is Power Apps, and we'll get kind of a, a different response. You'll notice that there's a woof woof in there and that I prefer playing in snow. I'll explain that as we get into how this works and why it's answering a little bit differently. But let's do the same thing. Let's create the formula. So I'll tell it to do the create the formula. And I get the simple formula filter contacts first name equals Dave. Now let's try something a little more fun. Let's see a little bit about the personality of our interaction with ChatGPT. We'll ask it, who are you, just like we did before. And we'll see that I'm Zena, a talking German shepherd who loves to play in the snow. Now I'll explain how some of this is getting in there and how I'm tailoring the personality of Ch ChatGPT and giving it some context of how I want it to behave. Let's look at a couple other examples real quick. So just to have a little bit of fun, who do you play with? I like to play with my sister Charlie and my brother Leo, a toy poodle. So how does it get that context? I'll show you that as we jump in. But just finally one other one that we'll do, we'll give it something that has something nice. And it recognizes it as a compliment. Now let's go jump into the application and look at how this was built. So we'll start by we added the data source of the OpenAPI custom connector that we imported into our environment. Now, if you were using the, the published one in a couple weeks when it's gone through certification, you'll be able to use the ChatGPT method on it without having to import the connector custom into your environment. Now, the next thing I've done is I've created the list here that will have the gallery that will have the results from using it. So I have a collection called prompts. I'm filtering that to show anything that doesn't include system in the role. Now I'll explain system and what the different roles are as we go through this a little bit more, but you can think of system as my instructions to tell it how it should behave. And the system prompts are different than what the user asks and what the assistant, the chat GPT responds with the reply. We'll see some more examples of how that is used. I have my input text box where I can type things in. And then finally, I have my send button that I'm sending this off to ChatGPT. So let's format this and take a look at what we're doing here. Now, this is 
pretty simple. What I do is when you hit the send button, I'm adding to my prompts co collection with a role of user. So that means something the user is asking, whatever you put in the text input box. I'm then calling OpenAPI chat post using the GPT 3.5 Turbo model and passing my collection of prompts. Now that's important that I'm using a collection because we're gonna build that over time as we have a session using the chat GPT API. That allows it to have the context of our prior interactions with it. So when we ask it something new, it knows what we're asking. Now, what we do is we set a variable response with the results from calling chat post and that gives us the answer from ChatGPT's API. We then add that result as a prompt to our prompts collection, and we, ta we tag the role as assistant so that when we go to call back to ChatGPT the next time, it has our previous questions and answers that it gave, and it uses that whole series of our conversation to tailor its answer that it's giving as part of that. Now you'll notice that I, I had some things where it said woof woof and it said it was a German Shepherd. So how did I do that? Well, let's go look at the on start of the application. So if we go to here and we look at what we're doing in here, we have are setting a system prompt to you are Zena, a German Shepherd that can talk Answer like you're a five-year-old, end every reply with woof woof. So now you know why the woof woof got in there. If asked if you like something, you prefer bacon. If they sound angry, reply growl. So what I'm doing is I'm building some characteristics of how I want the system to handle responses as it goes back. And what I'm doing as part of on start is I'm adding that system prompt to the prompts collection as part of doing it. And you'll notice that also, if we look at our screen, let's close the formula bar here. When you do the clear, what I'm doing is I'm clearing the prompts collection and adding back in the system prompt. So it's always in there, that personality is always in there. Now what's really cool about this, not that you wanna bring a German Shepherd into your power apps, but this is allowing you to basically add things, add chat GPT into your power apps in the context of the business data that the user is inputting in there and can give them insights from chat GPT in the context. And you can use the system prompt to give it some context of how you want to reply. You can also insert assistant tags to give more knowledge. Maybe something isn't responding right because chat GPT doesn't know about it. You can inject that into the conversation so it has that background and it will include that in the reply. So hopefully this was helpful to you. This is the first look at using chat GPT inside your Power App and custom using the API.